Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is Trim Options Explained. Okay, I'm going to go through all of the options for trimming. A lot of these are for new users that don't really understand the options, but then there's a few preferences that I'm going to show experienced users that you may not know. Some of them have been added uh, fairly recently in Premiere Pro. So trimming. Trimming is just cutting a clip from the full length to something other than the full duration. And typically you will see those little white triangles that show you the media is at the end. The clips that I'm using were originally uh, shot, these are from ArtGrid um, uh, stock video, and they were actually 60 frames a second, but I wanted real time, so I changed them to 30 frames a second by interpreting the footage differently. And for some reason, the triangles disappeared. I've never seen that before. But anyway, I'm at the end of the clips and I'm gonna trim them. So let's start just by talking about why you would trim. So let's look at this example here. I've got two clips of some basketball players and this guy is deking around that guy. And he's also here. Now forget the fact that this guy's got gray shorts and this guy's got black shorts. I didn't have footage of the same shot um, from a wide angle and a close up. The idea is I want the cut to look seamless from where the player with the ball moves around, and then we cut to the other camera, it's, it's him with the ball. Right now, this makes no sense if I play this. You see he's already made the move here, but here he hasn't made the move. So I need to trim the two to make it look seamless. So let's do the old way, uh, or not the, really the old way, the, the new user way they would manually trim and move clips. So let's get him just around I think we want him, yeah, with his body on an angle like that. So a lot of users will just move the selection tool to the end and you get the red trim tool and trim and then find that place here and then trim that and then move this clip over and then play this back. Oh, it's timing is off still a little bit, but you get the idea. So that's a lot of operations. And it still works, but if you do that 100 times a day, that's a lot of extra operations. So let's talk about ripple trimming. Let's go back to our original clips. And what ripple trim will do is it will take the remainder of this out and it will move this clip over. And there are two ways you can do that. Over in the tools, if you click and hold, there's a ripple trim tool. And it changes to a, a yellow orange. So if I click and drag now, it moves over. So that's one tool doing two operations. I'm going to undo that and show you that if you have the regular selection tool and you add the control key on Windows, the command key on Mac, that same tool changes to the ripple edit tool so you don't have to constantly go over and get it. So let's try that. Holding down Control or Command, click and drag. And then you can do the same over here. We can find that same place and do it from that side. Ripple trim, boom. So two clicks, boop, boop, and now we've got them together. Same thing, now we play them back. There they are. Now you can use the keyboard shortcuts Q and W for that same ripple trim operations. I'm not going to get into that here because I have a whole tutorial about that. You do have to make sure track targeting is set correctly. Okay. I also want to show you something else you might not know. And that's the fact that you can trim in the source monitor. If you double click on a clip, it loads it into the source monitor and watch what happens. You'll, you'll see there's the in and out point. And sometimes this is zoomed in to fill the whole screen. So you can't really see it. But if you double click on the zoom area, it zooms you out. Now watch this. As I click on the end and drag, I'm changing the in and out point. Now you can only go so far before you hit that other clip. But I could do the same to the beginning. I can trim that way. 
There's no right or wrong. I never use the source monitor for this, but a lot of people do. They, they love the precision of being able to see a full screen preview of just that over there back and forth. So that's another way of doing it. Now there's also a trim edit mode. If you hold the shift key and press T, you have to make sure your timeline is selected. Shift T, it gets you into the side-by-side -side mode and shows you both clips. So this is the last frame of the this clip. This is the first frame of that clip. And you notice when I move my cursor around, it changes to the ripple or the rolling edit tool. So I could do the same thing here. I'm just clicking and dragging. Remember, we want to get his body on the side and then clicking and dragging here. And this gives me the opportunity to see both of these side by side. And now when I click back over here and play, it does that. So that's also very useful. I never use that, <laughs> that mode, but actually if I was doing a lot of match edits like that, I probably would, but I don't do a lot of action match edits that way, but it's really perfect that way. Shift T gets you into that mode. Okay. Now there's another tool that I, I talked about here, which is the rolling edit tool. And again, we get that if we're in, in the uh, trim mode, and that's when it's in the middle. And the, the rolling edit tool doesn't remove any clips, any frames from either side. It just changes the, the transition point of where you move that, uh, where the edit is. So. If I drag this over to here, that's the equivalent of moving the head and tail positions of the two clips. I'm not changing any of the overall timing. This is not a ripple edit, it's a rolling edit. And just like the other tool, if I have the same selection tool and hold control, command key on Mac, if I move it into the middle, then I'll get the same rolling edit tool. Pretty easy. Okay, now let's go to a more complex edit that I have here. And the first thing I want to talk about is this option. Where I've got a blend mode on a clip over top. And in the wrench, this is turned on by default, composite preview during trim. So composite shows you the result of all of the blending of, of other tracks, whether it's a title or in this uh, uh, example, a blend mode, it's composited. And sometimes when you're editing, you need to see the composite of all the tracks. Sometimes you don't. By default, it's on. I'll show you what I wanna do with this edit here. I, the music changes and I wanted to jump to the next clip quicker. So right there, do, 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 do. I want it to go to the next clip, this clip. So I've got two clips. I'm going to zoom in and I want to right there. That point there. I want to ripple trim both of these clips over. And I'm going to show you two different things. So. The composite is on, so if I start trimming this, so I'm gonna ripple trim this, you'll see that I get both of the, the, the top and the bottom on the left side. If I turn that off, you'll only see the top layer, top track, or the bottom track. But when composite is on, you'll see both. Now, you'll notice that I'm, I'm moving my mouse with the ripple trim and I'm not being able to edit. And that's because, let me just show you the edit, the note. You see that tool chip that pops up? Trim blocked on audio one. What does that mean? Well, for this to ripple trim, everything over here needs to move to the left and it can't because it's, it's hitting the other clip. So, Premiere Pro is telling you the audio is already a whole track and you can't go further. You can't go past the beginning. It's banging into clips. So you can either lock the audio track or turn
turn off this sync lock. That's what this is, sync lock. So the easiest way to do this is, you can do this with the selection tool, but the easiest way is the ripple. If I click once and then click again, I've now added two edit points. So you don't always have to have your mouse held down to have an edit point. You can click and add an edit point. Now at this time, I could use my numeric keypad. So if you have an extra numpad on, on your keyboard and you typed in minus and you knew what the value was, I don't. But if you knew that this was three seconds, you could type minus three period enter. And that's go back three seconds or plus three period enter or minus 12 enter, that's 12 frames. So I've got that selected. Now when I move this back, you can see everything's moving. I've got the composite preview and this is ripple trimming and the, and the music didn't move. So now let's look at this edit. There we go. Let's look at it again. Great. So I ripple trimmed two tracks at the exact same time, but I had to have the sync lock turned off to be able to do that. And you'll get that warning. If you pay attention to those little tool tips, it'll tell you what track is interfering with that. Okay, now let's look at the, the options. So before I go to the options, I wanna show you that if I click here, I get a trim. If I hold control and click, I'll get that. Or same here, click, click, or click. So I can change the trim point. That's a default setting inside Premiere Pro. You can turn that off. I think that's, you can turn it off if, if you're a little bit uh, less adept at holding down modifier keys and, and hitting the, uh, and using your mouse. If you have some trouble doing that, you can turn this preference off. So in the edit menu, on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, Preferences, Trim. It's all the way down to the bottom here. And that's what this button is. Allow current tool to change trim type previously added. So if you have that turned off and you, you, you click on a ripple, you can't change that to a trim or a rolling edit. All right. Now, this one, changes the operation. So right now I have the selection tool, but when I add the modifier key control, it, it changes to either the ripple or the rolling edit. This is the opposite way. So I just leave that off. This is the fairly new one. Shift clips that overlap trim point during ripple trimming. So this is only for ripple trimming. I'll show you what happens here. Okay, so this is kind of an odd edit. I would never do this, but we have more clip here. If I ripple trim the head of this clip, there are two ways that this can affect the rest of the edit. This is with that option on. So ripple trim this back, and you can see it cut a hole in everything and moved it back the duration that I moved this, okay? So with that option turned off, which is the default, let's go back to our trim preferences. I'll turn this off. And now when I ripple trim this, those clips move because they're at the end of that. But there's, it doesn't cut this line here. So that's the basics of trimming with a couple of extra preferences in there that maybe experienced users didn't even know that they were in there, but they were been added uh, a, a while ago or recently in, in Premiere Pro. Trimming is, is really a tricky thing when you have more than one or two tracks, especially when you have dialogue tracks, audio tracks, music tracks, and I've got an adjustment layer on top of here. So lots of things can go wrong. Uh, the bug that I have in the corner here, that bug, when I put my bug track on my, my default edit, I just lock it because I want that bug to be showing through the whole clip. And if I don't protect it, it's going to be chopped up as I chop my show up. So uh, first thing, well, I actually load this as a template project, which I have a tutorial about. And I load the template, which already has that the bug layer 
locked so it never gets chopped up into little pieces. It can get a little bit uh, complicated. Sometimes people will just select stuff and manually move it when it, there's a whole bunch of layers. Don't think you have to learn how to use ripple trimming when you've got a complex timeline. And it's okay just to grab a whole bunch of clips and manually move them back and forth. It can get quite complicated. And hey, hats off if, if you're the kind of person that knows what's gonna happen on your lower tracks and upper tracks when you're using ripple edit, then wow, good for you because that can be quite complicated. I've got a tutorial, I'll link to this at the end about using a numeric keypad and having the precision to do that. If you really want precise control, one frame edits at a time, ripple, trim, ripple, uh, trim, ripple, trim, or rolling edits, Premiere Pro is quite amazing. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can jump on videorevealed.com slash shop and go to our store there and donate once or monthly any amount you want. There's a bunch of free things for you to download um, and you can also buy some cool looking titles. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to help the new people understand the basics but also help the veterans understand some preferences that maybe you do.